You need to think of them as your sales team. How do they stay incentivized? How do I keep out in front of them with new products? Most brands will provide a very nice discount to affiliates so that they continue buying the product. Obviously, they need to be consumers of your brand as well. Make it an experience. Make it something you'd want to join. Welcome to the Startup CPG Podcast. I'm your host, Jesse Freitag, influencer and affiliate marketing. Topics with a lot of opinions, a lot of success stories, and unfortunately, a lot of wasted time and energy when executed poorly. Thankfully, we've got resident expert Kim Biddle, founder of Clutch Affiliate, to walk us through what we need to know. At Clutch Affiliate, Kim focuses on consulting with emerging brands on how to build and scale profitable affiliate programs for their D2C business. I got to meet Kim in real life at Expo West this year, and she is an absolute delight and longtime member and supporter of Startup CPG, So it's so exciting to have Kim on the show today. Listen in as Kim shares about how to define influencer and affiliate marketing and key differences between the terms, considerations for launching affiliate and influencer programs, common compensation structures and tool ideas, how to measure success of a program, how to find affiliates and influencers, best practices and common mistakes, and more. Before we hear from Kim, I have some really exciting news. Today, applications for the next cohort of Mondelez International's Snack Futures Collab program open. So you are getting this hot off the press. We've had the pleasure of having the Mondelez International Snack Futures team on the podcast a couple of times, and we've had multiple brand guests that are collab alums. Could you be in the next collab class? Last cohort, three brands selected for the program were from our Startup CPG community. For the 2023 collab cohort, Mondelez International is looking for startup snack brands who are delicious and disruptive, have won the attention of retailers and consumers, and have at least $1 million in annual revenue. Let's hear a clip from Michael at Pan's Mushroom Jerky about his experience. I think we didn't realize how much access we would actually get. Anything from supply chain to uh, compliance, all the way to packaging, collab, and Mondelez just had all those resources, which we never would have had before. To hear the full story of the PANS team collab experience, check out episode number 54. And after this episode, head to applycollab.com. That's apply, C-O-L-A-B, dot com to be a part of Colab or grab the link in the show notes. Now let's dig in with Kim on influencer and affiliate marketing. Hi, Kim. Welcome to the show today. How are you? Hey, Jesse. How are you? I'm doing great. I am so excited to have you here today. Um, this is, I've been looking forward to it for so long. I was mentioning to Kim before we started recording just that, you know, I think this is such an important topic, affiliate and influencer marketing. It comes up a lot in the community. So to get to lend your expertise um, is incredible. And also just to, to talk to you again. We got to meet in person at Expo West, which was amazing. And so it's so fun to get to catch up again. Yeah, I'm really excited to talk about this topic. And this is my first podcast. So like, I'm just really excited to be talking to you and to have uh, the first, my very first podcast be with startup CPG. Um, As you can tell, like, you know, you asked me how I was doing and I came right back and was like, so how are you? (laughs) (laughs) So it's like, you know, uh, just shaking out the nerves a little bit. But uh, no, really excited to talk about this topic. I feel like it comes up a lot and want to try to help uh, guide some folks in this space to some of the things that are right to do and some of the things that are wrong to do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, this is great. I'm, I feel honored that, uh, that we get to be your, your first, uh, first of what I'm sure will be, a, of, uh, mini podcast interviews. So this is awesome. I'd love if you could start us off by just telling us a little bit about yourself and about Clutch Affiliate. Yeah. So, um, I live in the Philadelphia area. I've been born and raised here and, um, I've been in the natural CPG space for, Oh, about 20 years and worked for in, in various roles. I've worked in sales, marketing. I've run an influencer program from start to finish for about three years. And that was really interesting learnings, which really brought me to the clutch affiliate space, my, the, the consulting group that I have now. And um, that's it's just a space where I think there is a lot of questions. It can be a very scary space for some brands, 
So I wanted to really focus in on this space with my with my consulting group and really help folks just make make it through all of, all of the weeds of affiliate marketing, influencer marketing, the pitfalls, uh, the things that are best practices and ha- and help guide them. And it, it was a side hustle for me, which has now become a full time hustle. So I'm really excited to work with the clients that I'm working with currently. Uh, talk to talk to new people. And bring that, you know, bring them on and and try to help them build their programs the proper way. Yeah, that's great. And I would love if you could start us out too by just defining affiliate and influencer marketing, each of those terms. What are the key differences? Because a lot of times you get to see them used interchangeably. And I think there's some differences. Um, and I would love to hear your perspective on just, you know, what do those terms mean to just kind of help set set up our conversation? This is a really common question that I get a lot. And there's a lot of the the lines are slightly blurred between affiliate marketing and influencer marketing. And sometimes they meet. So it's it's very interesting. I'll start off by saying that in the, the the pure difference here is that with influencer marketing, you're paying someone to create content for you. And with affiliate marketing, it's more of a pay for performance. So but it's not to say that an, an influencer that you start working with can't become an affiliate. And that's where I want people to start to get creative if they're not already, is that that influencer that you get together with, if you're paying them upfront for some content, for them, to free, for them to create a recipe for you, for them to just create that general content and also build some brand awareness, if they love your product, go back to them and pitch them to become an affiliate. Make them a long-term partner. And then they get paid through their performance. And then you won't have to continue paying them. Uh, Now, of course, in influencer marketing, you will get together with those influencers and you will continue to pay certain people. And certain people will not want to become an affiliate. On the affiliate flip side, uh, you're finding... first, First place I say to look for affiliates is in your customer base, people that are already fans of your product. So go and do a deep dive. Who's been buying my product for a while and go ahead for I'd say six months or more and go ahead and invite them to become a part of your community. And you can invite them to whatever platform you're using. And I know we'll get into that probably a little later, but invite them to that platform and you can vet them from there if they're a right fit for for your affiliate program. And that's a pay per pay per per performance model. Had a little tongue twister there, but that's a that's a model where you'll you'll have a commission set up and you pay them on the sales that they make. So there's very little investment there. You have to invest up front with influencers, but there's very little investment uh, with affiliates because you're basically sending them your product. They're trying your product if they're not already a customer. And then when they become a fan, you want to convert them into an affiliate. And then there's also websites uh, and publishers that are affiliates also, which is another level. So there's different levels of affiliates, just as there's different levels of influencers too. Okay, great. That's super helpful. I kind of... So I'm kind of picturing like, When you see a blog post and it says, this may use affiliate links because it's Mm -hmm. these person's summer favorite, summer favorite foods or something, you know, they're essentially an affiliate of those brands and are creating links that they're getting commission on if any sales happen from the blog post. Whereas an influencer is someone you're maybe sending out product to, you're going to pay them you know, a thousand dollars to to post, um, you know, in their feed or a different fee for a story. Um, and they're not necessarily going to share in an affiliate link. They're just sharing about your product. And then you're saying, you know, maybe at some point you convert them to to an affiliate. Am I kind of thinking, you know, re- describing those correctly? That that's correct. That's correct. Uh, you can look at you can look at affiliate affiliates as more of a longer term partner. Um, and you can certainly long term partner with influencers, but it's going to get expensive. Mm-hmm. So the, the affiliate, the the whole affiliate play is to lower that spend, still get great content out of it, um, and also have them sharing a link, a, a code or a link. Whenever you're served a code or a link in either an ad or uh, just otherwise, w- you know, going through your own feed and maybe someone you follow. Like I follow a lot of nutritionists and 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 doctors, and then you know, of course, cooking blogs. And then you know, they'll have a, a, an affiliate code. You know, our you know our place with those pans that they had, um, or AG One. You'll you'll see uh, Seed Probiotic. So a lot of people that I follow are also affiliates for some of these brands. And then they'll have a code that you can go and try 
those products. It's a low, it's a low barrier to entry too for the consumer because you're not going all in full price. If you don't love the product, then you'll, you'll, you'll feel better, a little better about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Interesting. So thinking about, you know, our, our startup CPG brands are generally, they're emerging, they're on the smaller side, small team, maybe just the, maybe just the founder, maybe if they've got one or two hires and, you know, they're starting to think about whether they want to use influencer and or, you know, affiliate marketing. What things do you do you talk a brand through if they're like, hey, I'm thinking about these things? You know, what do you talk them through about whether it's right for them and, and what are some, some, kind of some different ways to dip your toe into this? Well, it does all come down to budget and then it'll come down to some ROI. The, the bigger ROI is on the affiliate play. I hear a lot of I have, I've always had, hear a lot of grumblings about people or, or brands really struggling with the fact of how do they capture ROI on an influencer campaign? And there are ways that you can do it, but it's, it's, it's much easier and it's, it's lower spend to capture that on an affiliate, on an affiliate program. Because with an affiliate program, you're, your spend is really going to get the product out to the affiliate, have them try it, and then set them up with a code. Uh, with those affi- influencers, that you, you need to have a bigger budget, and it's just a one-time thing, unless you want to go down the road on a partnership. Then you're, if you're spending $1,000 on a post, then you're spending another $1,000 and another $1,000. And what are you getting back from that? Yes, you're getting content back from that, and that's great. But what most people want is sales. They want sales. And for the affiliates... These affiliates that are fans of your brand are integrating this into their lifestyle. Influencers don't have to love your brand to take your money. Affiliates do because they need to present your products in such a way that are going to get people to buy them. So if you see me using uh, Athletic Greens every day and you follow me, but I'm also presenting it to you in a way that you can consume and you don't but feel like you're being sold to, that's golden because you're like, wow, Kim, Kim, like really, she's using that athletic green. She said she feels amazing. She said she's, she's sleeping better. I might need to check this out. And by the way, that'll probably take you three times to see me doing those things, putting it in the, putting it in the canister, shaking it up, taking a drink, doing whatever it is I do with my athletic greens. It'll take you about three times. And that's called conditioning your audience. In my in my opinion, I feel like everyone should have an affiliate strategy and a program, and everyone should have an influencer strategy and a program. Now, just starting out, I would start off with affiliate just because it's a lower spend and build yourself up to an influencer program. And then when you do get involved with influencers, have it be longer partnerships, not a not a one time thing because that's really inauthentic in my opinion. It does it's not it's not going to move the needle for you in any way. You're just going to spend a bunch of money, and that's it. You're not you're not going to you're not going to see any any needles really move. Yeah, that's super interesting. And that I have um I've worked, you know, tried to run some some influencer marketing programs using some different firms in the past and have definitely had the the experience a little bit of what you're talking about on the influencer side of, you know, I think I think it was a program where you were sending out to a certain number of influencers a month and then they would post about your brand but it was a one time post and you know there there was no showing how it kind of integrated into your into the person's lifestyle and it, it it ended up feeling very salesy and then you know that ends up not really resonating with the the consumer it seems like there's kind of the when you have the longer term opportunity there's more opportunity for the authenticity and to really show customers this is how this is working in this person's life versus, you know, here's a cool thing one time. Exactly. When you see something over and over again, and you're, you're, this is served up to you, you're going to be more inclined to go check it out. You know, you might go to the website the first time. Oh, this looks interesting. Then you might go and put a couple things in your cart. Oh, okay. I'm just gonna leave that there for a second. And then the third time you're like, I'm going for it. Cause then you've, then you've seen that person use it in a different way that just put it over the top for you. So I think like the answer, that was a long answer to your, <laughs> to your question, but for a young emerging brand, uh, it, it's so much less expensive to go an affiliate route than it is an influencer route. And you have so much more to gain. So it, it's just, it's an, it's an easier way to get started. And by the way, some brands launch with affiliate programs. I have a client um, that is going to be launching their whole entire 
business with affiliates. So it's just a, it's a very interesting way to go about it for these direct to consumer brands right now. Yeah. And you know, you, you mentioned at the beginning a little bit about that you can you can kind of tap your own customer base a lot of times for an affiliate program. I'm wondering if you could kind of expand a little bit on, on that, because I think it also it feels a little intimidating uh, of like, OK, well, how do I find these affiliates? How do I find these people? So, you know, how can you ma- how can you leverage the community and the the people you already have to help create a program? Amazing question, and I I love th- I love this question, and it's it's finding th- these these folks that are in your customer base. There's diamonds in the rough. There's people that are fans of your brand, and it's a hit the ground running kind of kind of uh, affiliate program in that regard. Now they're just one segment of your affiliates. Those those are your customers, and then you'll have new affiliates that you reach out to. But these these current customers, some of them can be really golden for you. You you don't know who's sitting in your customer base. It could be somebody that has twenty thousand followers. What if they have a hundred k followers, and you approach them and you're like, hey, we're putting together an affiliate program. We would love for you to be a part of it. We see that you've bought our product for six months now, maybe a year. Uh, and we would just love for you. We'd be honored for you to be a part of our affiliate program. We're here to support you. And we have all these assets that we can provide and content. And, and, and you, you know, that's, a, that's a whole nother segment too of how you, you know, how do you build out that community for affiliates that feels incentivizing. So I think, I think when you're a super fan of a brand, you're honored to get, to get that, to get that outreach that is asking you to become a part of their brand affiliate community. Uh, I know that I drink the same cold brew I have for 10 years. And if they were like, we're starting an affiliate program, Kim, and we've seen say no more, I'm in. What do I need to do? <laughs> yep. <laughs> like, seriously, like I just send me free coffee and I will tell every, I've already converted my whole neighborhood, by the way. Like yes. I, I just, and I just can't have enough, like, this is something that has been a staple in my home for the last 10 years. Now, I'm not saying you're going to go into your uh, customer base and find like hundreds of thousands of people. You know, you still should be discerning about who you get into that network and who you decide to nurture and who you think would be a really good fit. Uh, and don't, you know, don't leave out somebody because they have only a thousand or 2,500 people following them. Those people can have great influence too. You want to look at their, their Instagram feeds or their, any of their social channels that you're working through. And you want to just make sure that you're aligned and that you feel like this would be a really great fit. And, you know, you you love their attitude. You love what they're saying, what their content they're putting out. So I think there's, there's gold in those Hills. If you, if you go and look, and there's apps through Shopify, by the way, uh, one in particular called the archive app where, you know, consumers will tag you uh, in their, in their UGC and their user generated content. When they're talking about you, they'll tag the brand and that will then populate into an app called Archive, which uh, is, is is a Shopify app, and you can gather all of that and look to see there too who's talking about me, and is this somebody I might want to reach out to for my affiliate program? Oh wow, that sounds really cool. That's some awesome technology. Yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty neat. Um, I have a couple uh, clients that I look into their look into their archive apps every every now and then to just, you know, put some favorites aside and somebody's making some really good content, we want to reach out to them. Yeah. And what would you say that brands need to kind of have set up or established when starting a program? Because it seems like this isn't, you know, if, if you just reach out to a couple people or or kind of randomly do this, you you might not get the kind of ROI and results. So like, how can you prepare for this? Do you need to have some sort of like, brand kit or messaging that you've nailed down that you're sharing with people? Do you need to have some infrastructure for a community like a private Facebook group? Or is your, you know, can you use the community on your own social? Like what, what kind of do you need to have in place to really create the right environment for, you know, setting up your affiliates and influencers for success? This is another question that I really love and one I'm very passionate about. First out of the gates, I want everyone to set realistic expectations. You're not going to jump onto an affiliate platform and set it and forget it. You're not going to send a few codes to people and automatically start generating sales. It's not to say that you won't get a sale, but you need to build it from the ground up. And it takes, with my clients, I take six weeks to build a proper program and you really need to go step by step by step. And that means when you when you are ready to press the, the go button, 
that you have a proper onboard onboarding process for your affiliates. You want to look professional. You have a, a, a really amazing landing page that is just super inviting, uh, that will, people will get really excited about. You need to have assets for them to use any kind of banners or logos. You, you want to set them up for the win. This is, this is your, this is your sales team and you need to treat it as a sales team. And I, I've been in sales for a super long time and I know the things that I was always incentivized by. And that was structure, bonuses, contests, fun things that get people excited about being a part of your program. So these are the building blocks that you really, really need to have in place to have a successful program. A lot of people don't have patience for this. And I promise you, if you do the work, if you build it, and I'm going to use a very old, like, you know, field of dream saying they will come, they will, because they are going to view your program as professional. It's set up. It's fun. And that's the, that's the environment that you want to create. You also want to have like a person behind the scenes that's a real person that's engaging with your affiliates. Maybe you set up a Slack channel to, to share information, new product drops. Um, you know, that's a great way to keep real close touch with your affiliates, keep them, keep them going, keeping them warm and keeping you top of mind. And, and that's, that's all you need. That's all you need to do to have a, a successful program. Now I've started to put together a playbook and that playbook is something that actually these brands could walk away with and run their own show if they wanted to. I've partnered with some, with some really amazing, uh, women out of the Chicago and Indianapolis area that have a very small agency but they have a killer process and a killer playbook. And I basically got together with them because I felt like I wanted to bring this playbook out to the to as many people as I could. It's very affordable, but it's also the foundation that brands need to build. And especially if they want to take it in-house. So at, the foundation building is paramount. Yeah, that that makes sense. That That sounds really exciting. And, you know, we also, we have some questions in here too from... Uh, you know, from our audience as well. And one of them um, was from Julie about, you know, what should brands, you know, they're probably under a million dollars in revenue. You know, they're, they're figuring out if this is part of their, their strategy, what should they be thinking about from a like, you know, what, what kind of resources they need to put toward this? Like, is this something that your social media coordinator can take on? Is this something a founder can take on in a certain number of hours a week? You know, should, what kind of budget should they be setting aside to start? I know that's always a tough question, but I'm curious about maybe even just how you think about budget and then, you know, and then ROI as well. Like, how are you measuring like, okay, we set aside this budget or we dedicated this person to it. We sent out X amount of product, you know, is it working? Are there different ways that you measure, you know, ROI based on different goals? I know there's a lot in there, but it would kind of love to hear your, yeah, your that's thoughts. A lot of question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I get the general gist uh, of, of that question. And it's really a lot of, uh, you know, many brands do, do uh, wonder is, is affiliate marketing right for me? And I think like the best answer to that is a most likely yes, because of the low investment and some of the budget considerations that you have to think of is the platform that you're going to use to manage all of this because doing it in excel spreadsheet is not going to work i'm going to tell you that right now how much time and energy do you want to put towards it or do you want to bring somebody on to manage that and yes the social media person can do that if they have a great foundation built uh, that's that's entirely that's entirely possible I think you need to think about uh, brands need to also think about what kind of margin they have within their product. So when you think about setting a commission structure, you have to think of two things. I'm going to give a discount to, to the affiliates community because that's really important. And then I'm going to give a portion back to a percentage back to the affiliate, rewarding them for that sale. So um, a tier, and I'll just give you a tier example. So 10% to the community and then 5% back to back to the affiliate. Now that's just a that's a, a that's an that's a total example. You need to really look at the like how much your your product goes for, uh, the higher the product, maybe the lower the commission or the the you know if it's a, if it's just a, a pot, if it's a lower on the MSRP side, maybe a little bit higher commission to really incentivize because you want to sell a lot of them. So you have to build that in. And let's take that 10 and 5 example. That's 15% already off 
off your off your plate. And then you have to build in that platform cost, which most platforms aren't really expensive. Dovetail, by the way, is free at the moment. If you have Shopify and you would like to start to look at an affiliate program, I encourage you to download uh, the Dovetail app and start checking it out. And you can start poking around there. So that's free, completely free. And it does everything. But that... And then maybe maybe paying somebody to you know to manage that, but it's really the cost per acquisition too is figuring that out as it relates back to your budget. So and then sending sending product to to the affiliate. So let's say your product is fifty dollars. That's fifty dollars right up front to the affiliate because you're sending you're sending product. So it's it's the cost of product. And then the cost of the commission, the cost of the discount to the to the customer, but then you're also making a sale and then also relating that back to the customer lifetime value. So there's a lot of calculations in there, but it's just it it and and really it might sound like a lot, but it's pretty simple to figure out once you start looking at your margins and deciding who's gonna run it. Are we gonna do this in-house? Are we going to outsource it? And what does that outsourcing look like? Most likely a freelancer, a one-person show, or getting on a platform and really having someone internally work and learn that platform. Right. And in the commission structure, you mentioned like 10% community, like 5% affiliate. When you say community, can you define what that means? Like, does that have to do with the platform that you're using? No, it, 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 that's a it's a great question because that's there. there some some platforms do take a percentage uh, of of sales. Not all do. But that 10% is to the followers of the affiliate. So if I'm following uh, Dr. James and he's talking to me, uh, he's putting out some content. This is actually a real guy. <laughs> I follow Dr. James and he talks about Redmond, their, their, uh, their electrolyte. And he puts out some really great content. And then he'll have like in, 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 the, um, in the comments, he'll have his code. So, um, and then it's usually like 15%. So it'll be like Dr. James 15. And that will be my 15%. In his case, it's 15% out to the consumer. When I go to buy it, I'll get 15% off. And then whatever his commissions are, are his commissions on the on the back end, what's ever been decided. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's, um, it's, yeah, there's, there's two, there's two percentages there. Some people do dollar amounts too. Like it could be, um, it could be a $10 off your first order. So if I'm following Dr. James and he has that kind of structure set up, then I could get, if I'm following him and I really love what he's saying about uh, the electrolytes, then I'm going to go ahead and buy them and I'll get $10 off my order by using his code. And then he'll get a dollar amount maybe back to him or a percentage. It, you can really you can really play around with it a lot to make sure it works with your margins. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And how long, how long do you you know, work on a program and work, work with, you know, an affiliate as well to see, to see what's working, you know, how long do you give it? I'm sure it depends some on the, you know, like the buying cycle of the type of product, but I'm, you know, it's not something that you're going to send out codes and then within a week, you're going to, you know, you're going to sign up an affiliate within a week, your, your sales have doubled or something like, it seems like a longer term. So how, how long are you looking at, you know, an, an affiliate's performance to kind of decide, okay, what's working? What isn't, how much time are you giving that before you're kind of evaluating? So I talked about audience conditioning and you need to allow time for that. You need to really build in time. And, and I say, I say usually a 60, a 60 day time frame to build in some time. That doesn't mean sales are not going to come in in between that time at all. Hitting some revenue targets that you might put in place. You need to build in build in that time. I mean, within three months, you should be generating, you should be generating revenue. And within like the six month mark, if you have your affiliates, you have a really good base set up, they should be generating a, a, a really, again, we set revenue goals and percentage of sales. So what, you know, hitting, hitting some of those, they should be hitting some of those goals and markers at that point. A lot of, a lot of folks feel like, um, quantity is, is the, is the way to go. But I also have, have seen some brands where they've had a thousand affiliates brought it down to 400 and doubled their revenue because they started to put all their energies into those people that were really bringing in the sales. Because you might just have some of those affiliates out on the fray that are like one sale here, one sale there. You might get to a point where like that's okay in the beginning, but from an energy standpoint, I'm I want to bring it in and really focus on my core fifty people, let's say, and really put all put put all all of my eggs in one basket with them and really start to 
build out a special community around them. Still prospect, but still still going in that way. Because you know, managing a thousand affiliates and managing you know a few hundred or fifty is 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 vastly different. And and so I think I think you just need to keep a monitor on it. Um, I would say if someone hasn't produced a sale within a few months, then that's you might want to reach out to them. You need to see what their activity looks like. I mean, how, did they post the code one time in the, that ninety days? They should be posting that code multiple times a month, integrating it into their you know with them in the product, so that it seems very it, it it's authentic and um, that it's in, it's out and it's visible. And because we already know how the algorithms work, not everybody is going to see every single post. So they need to put this code out there. They need to put the product out there in front of people multiple times a month. And that can be set into your community guidelines. You know, when you set up your community guidelines, we really like you to post minimum two to three times per month. We're not going to tell you what you, you know, what you need to post. We'll give you some guidelines on certain attributes of the product, but um, you know, please, ha- please post two to three times because it, if you don't, you're not conditioning that audience to want to buy that product. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. And for managing these relationships, you mentioned, you know, using a technology tool, and I'm wondering, you know, what are some other best practices for just, you know, building the relationships with the with your affiliates of you know, how often are you checking in with them? How much, you know, how much are you personally reaching out to them versus saying, you know, hey, to all of my affiliates, you know, how how do you, what are some best practices for communicating with individual affiliates and keeping them engaged? I think that the more you're engaged with your affiliates, the more they're going to do for you. The more people feel appreciated and seen and supported, the more they're going to do for you. So what you put into it is what you're going to get out of it. If you set up a share a sale account and just sit back, you're going to get exactly what you put into that. And it's probably not going to be much. It has to be nurtured. It's a team. It's a team of people that you're relying on to bring in revenue. So when you think about that, again, I'm going to go back to the sales team. You need to think of them as your sales team, as, as you would a sales team. How do they stay incentivized? How do I keep out in front of them with new products, with um, disc, you know, most most brands will provide a very nice discount to affiliates so that they continue buying the product. Obviously, they need to be consumers of your brand as well. So there's a there's that there's that too. So uh, I think that's I think in my opinion, what you put into it is what you will get out of it. The more you put into it, and everyone has different philosophies about it, and and also you only have so much time. But a lot of these platforms can also automate some of these things. So I think that's where. You know, getting into a proper platform and exploring all that it has to offer, like an up promote, a share a sale, a reversion, those, those, those are just, just to name a few. There's many, many out there. When you're evaluating those platforms, see, make sure that it has as much automation as humanly possible so that you can be in touch with your affiliates without having to hop on email for an hour or two and, and you know, type out an email. Uh, or so it's it's just as much automation as you can put in place to keep those touches going and to keep exciting things coming down the pike for them is what you want to do. Right. Yeah. And on the on the technology side, so I've seen like there's like platforms where you can you know match and find influencers or affiliates to reach out to. Are those the same platform that you're managing your your program in, or does it depend on the technology tool? Um, you know, I'm, I'm wondering kind of how that works of like finding versus managing and the different tools there. Yeah. It, yes. Uh, so what you want to have is a keyword strategy, and you want to also brands have have an avatar, I call it, or a or demographic that they're looking to they're looking to reach out to or align with certain communities. So you want to have a platform that allows you to do searches and invite people to your platform, uh, you know, invite them to your, invite them into your program. So for instance, a promote has, has that option. Share a sale has that option. Dovetail has that option where you can go out and seek, seek people using a strategy like let's say beauty or let's, let, you know, let's say uh, adventure or you know any any keyword strategy that matches up that you might be using you can go ahead and pop that in there also specifically with dovetail you can go in and build lists you can also set up parameters 
I want 5% engagement and above when I'm building my list. I don't want anybody in there that doesn't have that. I would like the, the word gravel biking to come up. Like so, so anybody who's talking about gravel biking is going to come up in your search and then you will have set up those parameters. So it's, it's, it's really utilizing keywords that will find those people. They'll, they'll find your people that are talking about the things that are aligning with what you, you're talking about and what you ultimately want them to talk about. So a keyword strategy is really important and having a good discovery tool. Right. Yeah. That, though, that makes sense. And if you're looking, you mentioned, you know, that you can sometimes find a freelancer or use a vendor to help with, with managing these programs. How, how do you, uh, you know, what do you recommend for finding that right person? Because this is something we've talked to a lot about on the show of a lot of times what emerging brands can afford is, is an intern with no experience for, for a project. But when you're working on something like this, you know, you you want someone that also maybe knows a little bit how this works or can bring that experience. So how do you balance, you know, budget with finding the right person? And what do they really need to have experience in? What did they maybe not need to have experience in? And how do you find that right match of a vendor? I think you need to utilize your networks like like Startup CPG, for example, asking, you know, asking around, asking other brands how they're doing it and, you know, trying to find those those freelancers that are that are taking on clients and helping them from start to finish, or they're able to come in mid midway maybe and help you accomplish some goals. Everybody's in a different place in their process. It, it, you know, getting getting started with an affiliate program and building it from jump is different than coming into an already established affiliate program. And maybe it just needs maintenance and management or just a little more breath of you know putting some more life into it uh, or coming up with some more creative ideas. So I definitely I definitely think for emerging brands and young brands finding finding those people through through your networks and they can be found. They're out there. There's people doing doing what I'm doing and uh, there's also smaller groups, smaller consulting groups that are doing doing these things and also again talking about that playbook as- aspect, I really feel like brands should want to take ownership of, of this at some point in point in time. So even with with the clients that I'm servicing right now, I would like to see them after three months with me, six months with me, I would like to see them take this in house and wrap their arms around it with the proper person in place. I I feel like that is a in in my opinion a great way to own your program and and you'll have learned along the way everything with that freelancer with that person. So I just really feel like it's important. But I definitely would tap into your networks. Um, and 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 ask around and see what other people are doing for affiliate marketing. You know, Dovetail used to have an expert program, and that's I, I became a Dovetail expert probably a year ago. Just and was was side hustling with a with a few with a few clients, uh, and and really you know obviously turned it into uh, Clutch Affiliate. What, what what that is today, uh, and but that's how it all starts. You know, and there are some some of these platforms that may have experts there too that you can go in and get some office hours with, get started with, get the ball rolling. So they're out there. Yeah, no, that's that's very helpful. And I'm also wondering if there are any brands that you think do this really well that you recommend, you know, um, recommend anyone check out or, you know, take a look at just for some examples of, hey, here's some brands that seem to have a really strong program and, you know, that they're worth taking a peek at for some inspiration. Hundred percent. I have my favorites that will come up in my feed all the time. But number one would be a G one Athletic Greens, and I, I mentioned them throughout this podcast as just someone to go check out and and look at. Um, Wise CBD is is another one that I really love. Their landing page. I love their. They have a name for their affiliates called Wise Women. It's just I just love what they've done the whole experience there and they're, they're having it become an experience for the affiliate. It's not just this, this transactional process. And, and that, that's what I definitely want to hit home, hit home for everybody is making an experience, make it something you'd want to join. Uh, so I think that's, that's really important. Seed probiotic is one that I absolutely love. I, 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 I love the way it's presented by some of their affiliates. I just, I, I'm on the verge of, I'm definitely going to be trying it. I just haven't, I haven't, I haven't done it yet. I've put it in my cart a few times, but I'm almost there. Uh, and also, I feel Dry Farm Wines does a really good job. Those are those are some of, some of my top some of my top people that I that I look 
you know, I, I look at their affiliate programs. I see see what they're doing. See if I can get any learnings. But just from a CPG standpoint, uh, those are those are a few that that come to mind. Yeah, no, that's super great. I look forward to to looking those up, and we'll have to link them in the show notes as well, so that people can can ch- uh, check those out. Um, we also had a question from from Lisa, and going back a little bit to about like you know the compensation structure. She had a question about. You know, if you're working with an with an affiliate, can you can you do some sort of compensation structure where you base it on like a increase in sales, or is it you know usually what you were talking about of a percentage or dollar amount? Curious a little bit about if there's other you know other structures as well for for compensation. Absolutely, I think what Lisa's saying is if someone's performing really well. How do you incentivize them? And and brands and will build out multiple tiers. So if you start off at one tier level, then if you sell X amount, and again, these are all decided in the foundation and building process. If you if you sell X amount, let's say if you sell twenty, if you sell twenty units, then we're going to bump you up to that next commission level. So there's incentive for me as an affiliate if I'm the affiliate to go out and to get those 20 sales to reach that next tier. So if I'm making 5 per, 5%, I have the opportunity to make 10%. I want to climb that ladder and make the most commission that I can make. I've also seen brands come out hot out of the gates with like I'm giving 20%. That I'm going in. And I like that too. That's aggressive. That's like that's incentivizing people right out of the gates like let's go. I like that a lot. I like both. I do like both approaches. I like the conservative approach when you're just building, getting started. But I also like when people go go in, go in strong, and they're they're really they're putting a lot of trust. They're putting a lot into their affiliate. I mean, again, and it's performance based. They're not paying anything if they don't get a sale. But they could do that for a short term period of time. You could go in with a high percentage, back it down again. You could do things like that. You, you can get creative with that with that incentive structure for sure. And not having the same commission tier for a year. You know, let's 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 get them excited. Let's, you know, do a let's get a little rah-rah about it. Right. Yeah. No, that makes sense. And yeah, you mentioned like, you know, having some competitions and stuff. Are there any examples, you know, you have of like I think about when I've had like, uh, you know, it's a little bit different, but like a brand ambassadors uh, that do in-store grocery demos, we would do like monthly competitions or things like that to kind of build a sense of community. Can you, can you do things like that in this space as well? Absolutely. And I encourage that 1 million percent because you're, it's a healthy, it's a healthy competition. Number one, number two, you're the one that's definitely going to benefit, but so will the affiliate and you can have it be a dollar amount. You can have it be swag. You can have it, uh, you know, be an, an item, something. It, it, really, you can get so creative, and that's what's really fun about working inside this af- affiliate program is that you can get really fun with it and and have it be relatable back to your product too. So, if you were, I have a client that's in uh, that's uh, that's an overnight oat company, and. So what they could do is maybe they're going to give away a Patagonia fleece, you know, to pair with their affiliates tent, you know, camping adventures or something, you know, while they're eating their overnight oats. So just things like that, that align and that are complementary. Um, it doesn't always have to be your product. It could be something outside of that, but that, that aligns, you know, that aligns it is, is right in line with everything. Right. Yeah. Are there any other kind of, you know, common mistakes that you see um, that people can avoid um, when running these types of programs? Don't get wooed by the follower count. I, I mm. be more, be more, be more uh, wooed by the engagement. That's that's what I would look for. If someone has really high engagement, that means people are paying attention. Their content is good. Look at their content. Make sure it aligns with with your with with the messaging that you want to get out. But I feel I feel like so many people are like followers, followers, followers. It's that that's. I would much rather have somebody that has 5,000 followers that has more people listening to them and feels part of a community than 2 million followers. That's not to say that I would not get involved with someone that has the 2 million followers, but there'd have to be a process there of really breaking down like, what does this look like? What does my investment look like? What am I getting for my investment? And really, is that sustainable? I mean, I guess I guess maybe if it's a very high level celebrity, it could it could be it could be like, getting it out there one time and that could really be amazing for your brand but then what if it's not then you're out 
a few thousand dollars. So it's, it's a, it, and that, and, but again, you know, there, go, there's a lot of energy and time that goes into influencer relationships because you're negotiating, there should be a contract, there should be deliverables. Uh, there's definitely guidelines that are in place. So there's, and, and, and really the brand is dictating the content that they, they want and need. With affiliates, it's a little different again, because it's more of a lifestyle. It's more integrated into their lifestyle. But that's not to say with affiliates, you couldn't be like, hey, everybody, we're doing a summer sale. Could we get everybody maybe like, I don't know, if you're around water, could you, you know, could you do something around water or could you talk about summer or, you know, you can always infuse ideas into, into any affiliate program. It's just the, the, the pitfalls with, with influencer marketing is just the, the same complaint that I hear over and over again. It's just like, I'm not sure what we got out of that. I feel like I spent a lot of money and I didn't get, yeah, I got a good piece of content, but then that's one piece of content. A lot of people, I'll just say this, this is sidebar, but a lot of people sleep on Pinterest. A lot of people need to stop doing that because that's evergreen. (laughs) So I feel like a lot of content needs to start getting pushed out through Pinterest, in my opinion, Mm -hmm. too. Affiliate and influencer. Yeah. You know, I would rather see something there because I am, I am constantly now I know I'm a little older, but like I even my kid, my 14 year old has a Pinterest account. So it's it and it's your it's a search engine. And it's a it's amazing. So I'd like to see more people run. I'd like to see more people run influencer programs through that. And of course, TikTok, we know has had a lot of success. So I, I wanted to go back to that. You mentioned that the the number one complaint you hear is people saying, you know, was it worth it? Um, cause that's on the, ca- the few campaigns that I was involved in, that was the question that the, that the brand that ult- ended up, you know, after hiring an agency or running a program, you know, and maybe it was usually just kind of a quick thing. It was like, well, was that worth it? it you know, it seems like it didn't work. And then you just kind of throw all of influencer and affiliate marketing out the window because that one thing didn't work. And so I think it's been really helpful to hear your tips on how to evaluate it longer term and, a different ways to think about setting up really a program and making it engaging. Cause I think that's what s- seems like it's really missing when it's like, Oh, you know, nobody came and, you know, use this code that we set up. Well, you know, what, what was in it for, what was in it for them? What was the community? What was their experience? And it sounds like, you know, you've, you've talked a lot about how to make sure that the affiliates are having an awesome and experience and building that right program. And when you have that right foundation, then hopefully you don't end up asking, you know, that is it worth it question, but you have to put in that work first. You do, you do have to put in that work. And my philosophy is if you don't want to put in that work, it's, it's going to fall flat and you're going to be backpedaling. You're going to be backpedaling and trying to figure out like, Oh, how do I do this? Oh, well, maybe let, let me throw this together real quick. If you have it all built up front, then you can build upon it moving forward and you can change it. It'll be easier to change when you have it built from, from start than trying to build it when you have you know 20 affiliates that have now applied to your program. Now, what do I do? So it's, it's just better to, to build it, take the time. And this is where you know a lot of, a, some brands don't have patience and, and I get it. If I had a brand, I probably wouldn't either. So I, I definitely understand that. But this is the place to have patience is in those first six weeks of building six to eight weeks of building, build it right, build it, build it, build it methodically, have your processes in place, have your communication flows in in place, your workflows. When someone comes on board, uh, what's their onboarding experience look like? How do we answer questions? How do we keep people motivated? These are all things. It's like an, it's almost like an employee, but it's not an employee. So you have to, you have to, you have to treat it like that. Uh, and no, I know it sounds like a lot of work, but once you get past that stage, again, there's a lot of automation that comes into place. There's a lot of things that you can automate on your own and you can really get it, get it humming. So, so I really, I really want to stress that to, to brands that they really need to build out, they need to build a playbook and they need to mm-hmm. live by it. They need to live by it. Just like they build strategy for everything else. They definitely need to build strategy in a playbook for this. And it will, right. it, it will, it will be, it will be successful, but it does, it does take, it does take, en- it's engagement. It's you're engaging. You need to be engaging back. And if you, if you want to use your affiliate and an influencer like network or programs to support retail launches, I'm wondering if you have any specific tips for that as well. Is there anything that you different do differently that if you're really trying to you know, drive traffic to certain stores. I know there's, you know, sometimes 
like you're doing a national launch at Sprouts and there's influencers that, you know, shop at Sprouts all the time. Is there anything you can do differently to support a a retail launch using these programs? You know, that's such a great question. And I got to tell you, I, I haven't figured that one out yet because it's, you're actually going to retail and the Mm -hmm. codes, the codes really translate online through your online store. So I think like, I think if I were to, I think I would, I would run it like this. I would initially have the product trial done through an online purchase and then talk about where I am locally, where people can find me. But if I'm an affiliate, I'm going to lose out on that commissions then, isn't it? It's better for me. So I I really don't feel like, I don't feel like there's a way to do that. And if someone has a way, I would love to learn it and and understand how they can work together. But honestly, I, I feel like the affiliate is really an online space because that of that code and because of that commission back to, you know, back to the affiliate. Right. So maybe an, an influencer strategy of, you know, your influencer shops at Sprouts all the time. And so you're you're paying for an ongoing ongoing posts about Sprouts and you're compensating them for their time than for those their posts because they're not going to get any sort of affiliate commission. That is 100% correct. So your influencers are going to talk about and drive your retail velocity where you have your affiliates driving your online sales. And that's exactly right. So um, that's from an affiliate standpoint, I I don't have um, a I don't have an example of how it works with retail. But I do with influencers. I know that influencers have been integral in helping brands build the visibility, you know, having watching an influencer go into Sprouts, find your product on shelf, talking about it. Obviously, that's really powerful. And that's where influencers, again, that's where I think you should have both strategies in place. You should be working with both. There's, mm-hmm. You should absolutely be, be working with both. There's space for both. Yeah. Jesse here with a hot update. Because Kim cares about all of you so much, she went and did some research on this topic of using affiliates to drive in-store purchase. And here's her update. Hey, Jesse, it's Kim. I wanted to answer the question that had come up about driving to retail with an affiliate program. And what that is called is a clicks to bricks. What would happen is the affiliate would share their code or link online and the consumer would then go to the online store, purchase online, but do a pickup in store and opt for that. Many retailers have this. Uh, Dix, the sporting goods uh, has that option. And, um, you know, you can order online and then pick up in store. It's kind of brilliant. People, like to do it. They were doing it a lot during the pandemic. So uh, this is a practice commonly used for affiliate marketing offline as opposed to affiliate marketing online, which is everything is purchased online. So you can do it online and you can do it offline with that clicks to brick strategy. So I hope that's helpful. Is there any other tips that you wanted to share before we go into a little bit more about, you know, working with you and Clutch Affiliate? Anything else that we missed or that you wanted to add? I think I just want to encourage everyone to do their homework, look around, look at some platforms, maybe get some demos, learn learn what you can and you know, consume as much information as possible, like knowledge is power and talk to people. I'm I'm super happy to talk to anybody about about this space and I, I love talking about it. I generally am a a helper in the startup CPG network, so you'll see me on Slack and I mean I'm I'm happy. I've had chats with so many people uh, where nothing has transpired and you know what? That's totally okay with me. I I walk away feeling like I hopefully helped that person and hopefully they walked away and they got some some great knowledge. So I just wanted that to be known uh, that I am that person. I love meeting people, connecting with people and networking. And just overall, if I can give you a good piece of advice or send you in a good direction, that's what I want to do. That's great. Yeah. I mean, you've been part of Startup CPG for a while and have done so many amazing things for the community and are always super involved in the slack and i love you know i love seeing your your comments and everything in there so i think it's it's so great that you're a resource to our community it's just it's awesome um and yeah so cool so can you tell us a little bit more about what it looks like specifically to work with you on influencer and affiliate marketing a little more about clutch affiliate you know what does that look like would love to learn more in case people are interested absolutely so i'm pretty i'm pretty brand new i mean even though this has been my side hustle i i you know now it i've made it into my my full time my full time job i am working on a website right now so i'll have you know more information tips resources on that website 
And people can t- contact me through the, the Slack channel. You can certainly DM me if you want to just have a, a, a chat uh, and, and get to know one another. And you can also reach out to me my email, kim at clutchaffiliate.com. And the way, the way I work with people is and brands is uh, three different ways. I'll, I can set them up with a playbook and teach them everything about affiliate marketing to get them on their, on their road to do it themselves, like a DIY approach. Uh, there's a, a, a in, in the middle there, I can do the same thing with the playbook and also get them on their way to eventually go out on a, on a DIY and do some office hours with them on a per month basis to make sure they're keeping themselves on track. Any questions, maybe do outreach for them, anything they want really. And then the third option is really full blown soup to nuts where, for example, this, um, this one client that I'm working with that's launching with affiliates, I'm going to write their strategy. I'm going to do their competitor analysis. I'm doing, I'm doing everything for them uh, with, with the thought of eventually down the road that they'll, they'll bring that in house. But that's a more f- full service. So, and I, I work on, I, wor- I mean, there is a cost for the playbook up front, but then I work on an hourly basis after that, really. And I, I come together with the brand to, I make it really affordable, number one, because I want to work with as many young emerging brands as I can. And um, I, it's, it's very approachable. I, I think, you know, I'm pretty approachable. I'm down to earth. I'm pretty fun to work with. And I'm very, <laughs> I'm, I'm super creative and very competitive. So I'm going to get really strategic with you. I'm going to get really creative. I'm going to be thinking about you a lot if you're my client. And you, I'm probably going to pull in other things too that have nothing to do with affiliate and influencer marketing. I'm be like, here, you should do this. Here, you should do that. Here's something. I mean, just you know, little, like maybe I see an award that you should like jump into, or or uh, you know, if you're looking for investments, and I I happen to see, I happen to see an investor looking for something, maybe matchmaking that way. It, that's just little things that I just love to bring to to my space with my clients because because I care. Like I really I really like to have that that personal relationship. And, and it's really, um, it's just really important. It's, it's, I treat it as if it's my own, my, my own, my own business. And I want to move this industry forward. I'm really passionate about it. That's great. Yeah. I, I mean, I cannot think of, uh, anyone else I'd want to have in my corner on this <laughs> than you, Kim. So this is, this is great. I'm so glad that, you know, you've, uh, shared info on how to connect with you. I hope people connect with you, you know, definitely at least in, in Slack. Um, and then also, you know, I just think you're such a great resource for our brands. And I thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing all of this knowledge today. This has been super valuable um, and just like really interesting. I, I wish I could have, you know, listened to, I wish I could have had this conversation with you a few years ago to really help me navigate this when I was at a brand because it just, you know, it's it's been super interesting. So thank you so much. Really appreciate you being here and spending some time with me. Thank you so much for having me. I love the startup CPG community. I'm the I'm I'm a huge fan and um I'll see you in the Slack. And thanks again. If you like the topics of influencer and affiliate marketing, make sure to check out our interview with Ali from Oat House about how they used influencers to support their Sprouts launch. Oat House also has an affiliate program built into their website that you can check out. Go to episode number 59 to hear more. Thank you for listening in today. I'm so honored you joined me for this conversation and I love hearing from you all with feedback, suggestions, or if you just want to say hi at podcast at startupcpg.com or you can find me on LinkedIn. If you liked this episode, we'd love for you to share it with a friend or colleague, subscribe so you don't miss future episodes, and maybe even leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. If you aren't yet in our Slack community of founders and experts, we'd love to see you there. You can get the free invite at startupcpg.com and find all our other awesome resources there like webinars, databases, the blog, the magazine, and virtual and in-person events. And if you found yourself rocking out to our intro and outro music, which I do every single time, make sure to check out the Super Fantastics on Spotify. It's the band of our Startup CPG founder, Daniel Scharf. I'm Jesse Freitag, your host and producer, and on behalf of the whole team at Startup CPG, thank you for being here and see you next week.